In today's video, we are going to try and fix all the things that Algo didn't do in the second iteration of the Algo Centuri Carbon. My version has the AMS port in the back, it doesn't have the LED. If you are ordering straight from Algo, you are probably going to get the newer version, which is going to be uh, including the LED strips that are not present in my unit. So depending on when you order or where you order your system from, this was from 3D Jake. Mine didn't come with the LEDs, it did come with the AMS port. So first thing we are going to tackle is the LED set up. We have some LEDs right there in the closet. We are going to change them out so we can see what we are actually doing. Let's take out the gloss, remove the spool holder and turn it around because we need to be on the underside where the electronics are. Here we have at the main board of the Algo CC. I can see this second connector is saying the wording light. So what I'm going to do is put on a connector with some leads. Check it out if I go into the menu and turn on the light, if it actually is powering the, this port or not. If it's not going to power this port, we are going to directly hook up our LED lighting to the power supply instead of on this board. So first of all, let's make some connections and see if this port actually works. All right, here we have the test setup. We have our voltage meter, we have our cable connected to the light port, and we have our two leads that are going to measure what kind of voltage is going through the system. Right now, it is actually providing 0.4 volts which is interesting it's pretty high for something that is not working now what i'm going to do is turn on the led which is in the chamber which is right now off let's go into the menu the light is on and we can see 24 volts which is nice so this means that the port right over here is actually usable for an led light now the only constraint we don't know is going to be how much amps we can pull through this connector. It is definitely not going to be more than one amp, so I'm going to try and keep the light as minimal as possible, but still try to provide enough light in this chamber. So the result I can see right now is really hopeful. The only thing I can say is this could be potentially very risky blowing up the motherboard of this Algo CC and rendering it's that. What is going to be the safe way is hooking it up straight to the power supply because that way we know for sure that if we fry something it is only the power supply which is pretty easy to uh, replace. It is not going to directly fry. It is however going to go in some kind of a protection state when we are overpowering the power supply. So I'm not sure what is going to be the best take. Now some of you have recommended me to use a port that somebody else has used the port and also did the same thing on the Creality K1. I also used the backup port and uh, I think we are going to use a port. I'm going to make a little test setup with an LED light and see how far we are going to get with that. I hope I'm not going to fry this board. And here we have it. This is going to be the LED test setup. It is a bit of a cool white, but we can see we are pulling under 0.5 of an amp. And this is way more of the LED I want to use in the Algo CC to begin with. So I guess that right now we are at around 10.8 watts. This is going to be perfectly fine for the port. The only way to know is to hook it up to the Algo CC and look what is going to happen. So a little status report. This is going to be my double wire I'm going to use with this port. I'm going to zip tie it along with the rest of the cabling in order to not make it short with the chassis. I'm just going to push over a little wago just like that so the cable is safe. We are going to put it at the bottom of the printer because first of all we need to do a print which looking at it now I probably should have done first. For that we are going to use PCTG from 3D Jake in the poly dryer box. It is keeping it at a nice 10% of humidity. This is actually a pretty cool combination. The Polymaker box next to the Algo CC is in my opinion the perfect match to keep all your filaments dry while still printing all your engineering-ish type of filaments. The first print is done with PCTG from 3D Jake. It is acting a little bit like the uh, PETG but with the heat resistance of ABS or something somewhere in the middle. It has the printability of a PLA that is closer to a PETG so still pretty good and uh, yeah this is going to offer you better heat resistance, better printability than PETG so this is a very nice in-between filament between PETG and ABS I would say. All right we have all the things. I have applied some VHB tape which is going to stick very well to this plastic. I've made this extra little tube for the cable to run into and we have a double row of LEDs. I connected them right here in the back and we also have a lead right over here and this is going to connect to the board of the Algo CC. Now I'm going to try and install this little, yeah, I would not recommend you to copy this. 
if you want to, the files will be online, but like you can see, this is going to be far from optimal. The LEDs do not have enough flexibility to do what I wanted to do. Now, it doesn't matter for me if it's work, it works. Most of you are probably going to print a riser anyway. All right, let me install this and then I will get you right back when this is in and working. So this is going to be the Algo CC in the stock settings. So even if the LED in this corner is going to be turned on, you wouldn't see what is going to be inside. Now, all the lighting is, and we are going to push a button. I have put in an object inside to see if the LED and this fly is actually going to show up when we turn it on. And look at that. Wow, I can see it in the camera already. It is massively big difference. We can finally see what is going on in the Algo CC. We have routed the cable with some zip ties. The black sheathing is looking awesome. And then right over here where the motors are, we have zip tied it to the USB-C cable going up here. And right over here, we have all the light in the world to power this printer. So this is what, in my opinion, it should have looked at from the beginning. So if you are unfortunate and you got a model without the LEDs, I can already tell you that the port that is going to be on the motherboard of the Algo CC is effectively going to work to plug in any kind of an LED strip that is going to be compatible with 24 volts DC. Like you can see, it is finally very clear what is going on in the Algo CC. So now it's time for the next upgrade I want to do, which is going to be the damn hinge on this printer because yeah, this is going to be the maximum it is going to open up. But luckily some people on printables already made some hinges. I'm going to print them and I'm going to test them out. These are looking pretty nice. Fairly good quality. We do see a little bit of Z-wobble, but this is very normal for being such a thin print. But yeah, this is looking great. Time for the next upgrade print, which is going to be a waste bin for all the poop. The last prints are done. This is going to be for the waste bucket poop shoot, whatever you want to call it. It is looking actually pretty amazing. This piece is really good. Then this is going to be the bucket itself. This is also looking really neat. This is everything we printed. I cleaned up all the supports. I have to say it is all looking pretty neat. These are the bottom surfaces of the Algo CC. It is looking perfect. The same with this thing, bottom surface, absolutely perfect. And then we have this one over here, bottom surface looking absolutely perfect. This print quality on all these parts are looking really neat. Also this one over here, it is looking perfect. Overhangs, everything is really, really good. It really looks like the uh, part cooling or the external part cooling on this printer is doing its job super, super well. Even printing these little spacers is absolutely not a problem. If you are wondering what filament we are using, this is going to be Conjure PLA Silk Tricolor. I will leave a link down below. All right, so now I'm going to fast forward, assemble everything on the printer, and when I'm done, I will be right back to you. Just like that, the mod is done. Now it's time to see what these are meant for. This is going to be the toplet. And this thing should just slide in, just like that. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. So if you don't want to use the top sheet, because you do PLA, I tested PLA with the top sheet, it is fine. But if you just want to remove it, you want to get it out of the way for any reason, this is awesome. Now the hinge is almost ready. We have one part left. This is probably going to sit somewhere over here. So one thing we can see with the tricolor, which is a little bit of a use error, is that we are going to have different shades of color. So it's going to be really important that you get your orientation of all the parts about the same so that the surface level of these little 3D printed parts are going to be looking pretty similar because this was printed in a different orientation and we can see we are not matching anymore. Now, I could care less. For me, it's not a problem. It's just a quick little tip for you that you need to look out what the orientation is going to be if you are going to use any tricolored silks. These spacers are unfortunately a little bit tight. I looked at the instructions and the set to 
uh, change out the orientation of printing from outer to inner, in my opinion, a little bit of redesign and shrinking them a little bit would be the better solution. But yeah, a little bit of sanding will fix just that. It is just going to take a little bit more time. We are now probably almost a full day in from designing, building, putting in the lights, printing these parts, which took around six hours and a half. Now we are doing the final sanding, hopefully. And now I think it should fit. hinges are on they are still a little bit loose because I want to do the final adjustment when the door is on so right now I'm going to look what kind of bolts we need so there's probably going to be yeah we can put a knot in here then we need a bolt that is going to be long enough for that and this seems to be just about perfect now the tighter you're going to get this bolt, the more clamping force you will get on the hinge. Tighter this is going to move. So this is something that you want to be aware of. We have a door that now, look at this. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. A 3D printed part. Yeah. I do know that this is printed in PLA. The chances that this is going to deform of heat are pretty high. Now, from what I can see, the Algo CC doesn't go over 40 degrees, so it might give it a hall pass. If not, I'm going to probably replace these parts, the ones that are going to be uh, tightened on the glass, to something that is going to be more heat resistant. Now, time will tell, it will not just fall off if we're not being an ass. This is now going to be a fully kitted out Algo CC. What do you think? Should we finish with something to test everything out? I guess so. Time to find a file and put it on the printer. So while the printer is ready for the last print, let's talk about a few things that I figured out in all the time I have been working with it. When it's doing the first layer, it sounds a bit like the old school, once the, uh, the computers were still on Windows 95, so the crackling sounds, this printer is definitely not quite, the steppers are quite noisy, not sure what, the, what kind of drivers they are using, but it is definitely more noisy than I used to. Also another thing I figured out is local bed meshing is not a thing on the Century Carbon. We are wasting loads of time for small prints because it's doing the complete bed mesh before it is going to do every print. So Elgu, there's not a point for you to work on. I want local bed mesh right now. We are wasting huge amounts of time to do our meshing. Then also a weird thing I found out is when the Elgu is doing something, is it loading or unloading the nozzle, for instance, you cannot do anything else with this printer. If you are on your laptop or your computer and you're trying to send a file to the machine while it is doing something, guess what? It is going to fail. Your machine is busy. This is also the first time I have ever seen something like that being an issue on a printer. While it is doing something, it is not accepting new commands or it's not sending files or anything of that. So there definitely seems some special sauce in this machine from Algo that is less than optimal, let's say. I really hope they are going to do something about it. Really, I want to have Clipper. I said it in the previous video, I really want to have Clipper. I really would like to see it. Not, it's probably not going to happen. Rumors are they are running some kind of a fork of Clipper, but they locked it down completely. So yeah, it is what it is. Unfortunately, we are going to get a proprietary firmware chisel that is right here on this Algo CC. Also, another thing I have noticed is the webcam. For some reason, sometimes the webcam doesn't show up on my feed when I'm looking through the slicer. This can be at any time and it doesn't include all the devices. Sometimes it works on my phone, it doesn't work on my laptop. When I go away home, it works on the slicer of my computer and the next day it will not work on my computer but it will work on the laptop and it doesn't work anymore on my phone. So it seems to be very random when the camera decides to work or not work. So yeah, there's definitely some software tweaks needed. I really would like to see more options being opened up to the folks for instance, right now, we don't have any idea how bad the bat mesh is. Not that it is a problem. We established with all the prints that we have done, bat mesh is actually pretty good. But still, I would like to see how bad my mesh is. So this is a kind reminder to Algo that there is still some work on the printer. Also, please 
for hell's sake fix your communication to the people at home that they at least know what kind of a version they are going to get because right now it is going to be a complete crapshoot and you are not knowing what kind of a version you are getting. I have an in-between version, version 2 or 3 or whatever it means. I have the AMS port, I don't have the LED lights. Some people are getting one LED, some people are getting two LEDs. So it is very confusing right now what kind of a version you are going to get when you purchase your Centuri Carbon. Now fortunately all printers these days are going to have the AMS port if this is something that you are really waiting for, the AMS, it is still allegedly, the port is there, they made a promise, are we going to get one? It is not here, so right now we are buying into a promise if we are going to look at the AMS. Now for the rest, I really like this printer, it is fast, it prints great, VFAs seem to be very minimal, the uh, overall surface finish quality thingy on the silk seems to be rather okay we do have a little bit of a flow limitations but for this price that is not something i would be to worry about so really really solid experience right now there are some things that need to be looked into but so far if you don't have an algo century carbon and you are looking for your first entry level printer it is looking really solid and here we have it the finished print let's look at the dragon well, this is my first Flexi Dragon. By the way, all the links of the models, the things that I have printed will be in the description. So if you want to replicate anything that you have seen today, then you will find the files over there. I have to say, this is looking absolutely perfect. I can't really see anything wrong with this print. I don't see VFA, I don't see any weirdness. We can also see that all the tolerances are there. And this is actually, my first ever dragon. A few years after the hype of the dragon, I finally printed my first one. And uh, yeah, I can see why people like it and why people would buy it at fairs and all of that. Especially now with the tricolor filaments, this is looking like a very funky uh, kind of dragon. We see different colors everywhere we look at. So yeah, this is definitely a really cool print. I think I'm going to call it. We have fixed every damn issue that there was with this printer. I am now super happy. Let's close my new fancy door. Let's grab the sheet out of the side, put it right on top. And now the only thing we have to do is turn off the light and put it where it belongs, which is going to be in my corner. All right, I hope you took something from this video. If you have one of the old batches with the lack of an LED, then there is definitely something for you to fix it. We have an extra port. You can use the power supply, however you fancy. But if you're going to connect it at the LED port, we can push a button and now the light goes out. If that is something that you fancy, then do it that way. All right, that's gonna be it. Thank you so much for watching and I see you in the next one.